In this video, we're going to look at circles. And primarily, we'll be looking at the area, how we find the area and the circumference of a circle. So before we do that, we're just going to look at a couple of words which are important. And you could well be asked in your exam just to label these things. Uh, then we'll draw a diagram and they'll put a wee arrow and say, what is this? What does this line represent? So first of all, uh, we'll start with the two easiest ones. A radius is a line which takes you from the center of a circle to the edge of a circle, which is called the circumference of a circle. So the radius is a half line that goes from the center of a circle to the circumference. So there's your radius there. Your diameter, you can see it is, it goes all the way across the circle, and very important, it goes through the center of the circle. Okay, there's your diameter. And next one then, easy one, is if you do two points on the circumference of a circle, if you have two points on the circumference of a circle, a chord is a line which just joins those two points. So that is a chord, C-H-O-R-D, uh, is a line which joins two points on the circumference of a circle. Now the circumference, it says here, is the perimeter of the circle, so it is all the way around the outside of the circle. That is, that dimension, is the circumference of a circle. And the last one, which is a hard one, which more than likely you won't be asked, to be honest, is a tangent. So a tangent to any curve is a straight line which just touches the curve and no more. So at this point here, the gradient of the tangent is the same as the gradient of the, of the circle. So the tangent changes as you move around. So you imagine if you've done one here, tangent would look like this, a straight line, one here, whoop, one here, your tangent would have looked uh, like this, and one over here, your tangent would have looked like this. So a couple of important things. The diameter is twice the size of the radius. The diameter cuts through the, the, the circle passing through the center. So the diameter goes from one side of the circle to the other, going through the center. And the line cutting through the circle but not passing through the center is called a chord. So that's from two points on the edge of a circle. And then a radius goes from the uh, circumference of the circle to the center. And a tangent meets the circumference at one point only. So it just touches. And very importantly, it has the same gradient. Okay, uh, right, for the circle, uh, you've got your C is equal to pi times diameter. So this is your circumference. Equals pi times diameter. And then your area is equal to, uh, area that is, is equal to pi times the radius squared. So your D stands for diameter, R stands for radius. There is another formula for the circumference, which I am more uh, popular for, more fond of using, which is two pi R. Now it just comes from the fact, remember your diameter is two times R. So if your circumference is equal to pi times D, it's also equal to pi times two R, which is the same as two pi R. So there's uh, a f three formulas really which you must use. So you've got your circumference is equal to pi times diameter, circumference is equal to 2 pi r, and then the only one I want you to think about for your area is area is equal to pi r squared. This example says find the area and perimeter of the following circles to 1 dp. Uh, uh, so you'll need your calculator to do this. Uh, it says find the area and perimeter of the following circles to 1 dp. So for the first one, uh, Area, remember the formula for the area, is pi r squared. So in this case, it's just pi times 5 squared. If you do that on your calculator, very importantly, it will come out, if you have a half decent calculator, it will come out as 25 pi. Then you must press your SD button. Press your SD button, if you just do that, pi times 5 squared, and then press your SD button to 1 dp, you will get 78 0.5 and the units will be centimeters squared brackets to 1 <coughs> dp. It also asks you to find the perimeter. The perimeter in this case is a circle, so it's equal to c. Your circumference, I'm going to say c is equal to 2 pi r, so that's 2 times pi times 5. If you do that on your calculator, it gives you 10 pi. So 2 times pi times 5 comes out as 10 pi. Press sd. And the one decimal place, you're going to get 
0.4, and that's going to be centimeters. It's just length, remember, to one decimal place. Okay, same idea in part B. It's a wee bit different, as in this case, they have given the diameter. So to find the area, the first thing you need to find is the radius. So the radius is going to be 17, point, or sorry, 17 divided by 2. So the radius is going to be 8.5. You can then find your uh, area using your area is equal to pi r squared. So it's going to be pi times 8.5 squared. Um, I'm just going to give the answer to this one to uh, 1 dp, so let's just check that one out. So it's going to be uh, pi times 8.5 squared. And what I have got is 200, I will show you what it was because I need a wee bit of rounding here, 226.98007. Uh, which would be then to one decimal place, two, two. Uh, my first decimal place is nine, my second is an eight, it's my check figure. So that eight causes that nine to round up, which then it goes 227.0, and you need that point zero, and that's going to be meters to one dp. For the last bit, for the circumference, we can just use pi times diameter. So in this case, it's just going to be 17 pi is what it's going to come out as on your calculator. So 17 times pi. And press equals, and what you get, press SD, what you get is 53.4. That's going to be meters to 1 dp. Okay, the next example, example five, is a wee bit more difficult. It says find the area and perimeter of the following shape. So here we don't have a full circle. We have a fraction of a circle. So it is a quarter of a circle is what we have in this one. I'll do the area first. The area of these ones are going to be definitely going to be easier. No real tricks. It is just a quarter of a circle. So it's a quarter times your area formula, which is pi r squared. So in this case, it's going to be a quarter times pi times 10 squared. And if you did that on your calculator, it gives you a perfect answer of 25 pi. So do that on your calculator then and press SD. So 25 pi and then press SD. It's going to work out to one decimal place as uh, 78.5. And look at the units are a bit strange. It's kilometers squared. And that is to one decimal place. Okay, to get the perimeter for this one, a bit tricky. Uh, you've got this, which is a quarter of the circumference. And then what you've got to remember is add on this 10. And then what a lot of people forget, because it's not labeled, is you've got to add on this length as well. So label this length on your diagram as 10 kilometers. And then that we shouldn't forget it. So what our um, perimeter is going to be is going to be a quarter times uh 2 pi r plus the 10 plus the 10. So in this case, that's going to be a quarter times 2 times pi times my r. And this 10, remember, is my radius. So it's times 10 and plus 10 plus 10. You can do this in one go on your calculator. So have a go at doing that, please. So put in a quarter and then times 2 times pi times 10. And then just press plus 10, plus 10, do it in one go, and then press equals. And what I have got when I've done that in my calculator in one, one go is 35.7 kilometers to one dp. And the next one is a similar sort of question. Uh, for the area, it is, instead of being a quarter, it is three quarters of a full circle. So three quarters times pi times four squared. So if you do that on your calculator, uh, what you will get is, so if you do three quarters times pi times four squared, you'll get 12 pi, which is a perfect answer. And then if you do that to one decimal place, that will be 37.7 and the units will be centimeters squared. And that's the one dp. Your perimeter, it is three quarters of a circumference, so three quarters times two pi r, and then you've got plus a four, and then you'll have another four here, 
because this is also four. So on your diagram, can you just label uh, label this wee length as four as well? And then we'll know what we're doing. So it's going to be three quarters times two pi r plus a four plus another four. So in this case, it's three quarters times two times pi times your r, and your r in this case is four, and then plus four, and then plus another four. And we can do that in one go again on our calculator. I have an answer here. I'm just going to check it. So three quarters times two times times pi times four and then plus four and plus another four press equals and I was right which is a nice change 26 point uh, 26 point eight centimeters to one DP so you can see there's our four answers done Okay, in these examples, what we're going to do is a reverse process. So this is where you're maybe given the area or the circumference and you're asked maybe to work back and find the radius or maybe find the diameter. So let's just jump into the examples. So it says a circle has an area of 170 centimeters squared. Find its radius. These are proper mathematics questions, I think, because you've got your, you have to actually apply what your knowledge and have to apply it to work out the solution. So it says a circle has an area of 120 centi uh, 170 centimeters squared. It mentions circle and area, so you, the sensible thing to do is write down the formula, which is pi r squared. Now, folks, this is what mathematics is all about, taking that first step, and then from that first step, then hopefully you can move on and get to a solution. Now what you have to do is reread the question, and it tells you the circle has an area of 170 centimeters squared. So that's 170 I'm going to replace with my by with my big A. And there we have 170 is equal to pi r squared. The question then, let's see what we're going to do. It says find its radius. So the end result here is we want to find out what r is equal to. So what we've got to do before we get there, we've got to find out what's going on. Right, so let's have a look at what's going on. You have 170 is equal to pi times r squared. So the first thing that's happening is your r is being squared. Then it is being multiplied by pi. So you have to reverse the last thing you did. So let's go through that again. What we have is r is being squared. Then you're multiplying by pi. So the first thing we need to reverse is multiplying by pi. So you have 170 divided by pi is equal to r squared. So 170 divided by pi is equal to r squared. Now the opposite of squaring something is square root, and you can do that from one go on your calculator using your fraction button on your calculator. So you have 100, square root of 170 divided by pi will be equal to r, and let's do that on your calculator. So have a go on your calculator. So do it on your calculator, folks, press your square root button, and then press your fraction button, which is that, that button, and then what you're doing really is the square root of and you're putting 170 in the top box and pi in the bottom box and then you press equals and that will get you the answer. So have a go at that please and see can we do we agree with my answer. So I'm doing square root and then my fraction button and I'm doing 170 in the top line, pi in the bottom line, press equals and it gives me an answer of 7 point and I'll go to two decimal places this time 7.36 uh, centimeters to two decimal places. This question has got three parts to it. It says a circle has a circumference of 90 meters. Find the diameter and then find the radius and then find the area. Now, uh, to do this, again, it tells us that the circle has a circumference. So you write down your formula for the circumference. And I'm going to say c is equal to pi d. I could have used 2 pi r, but I'm using pi d because the first thing we want you to find is the diameter. So fill in what you know. The circumference is 19, and pi times d. So what pi is doing at the minute, pi is multiplying your d. So when pi goes across, it's going to divide. So 19 divided by pi will be equal to d. And if you do that on your calculator, you will get... Uh, 
and I'm going to write down a whole pile of decimal places. So 6.047887 dot dot dot. Write that down, please. And then give your answer to your D as 6.05 uh, centimeters to two decimal places. Right, the reason I, I copied this one down to so many decimal places is because to get my radius, uh, I don't want to just use this one because it might not be accurate enough. Now, quite often, nine times out of ten, it would have been accurate enough, but you're not too sure. So, uh, can you just use a wee bit more accuracy? So, 6.047887. Uh, that is your radius. Sorry, that is your diameter. And to get your radius, you divide it by two. So, 6.047. 47887 divided by 2 gives you a radius. So your radius is 3.023943. So your radius is 3.02 centimeters correct to two decimal places. And the last part of the question asks me for the area. So my area is equal to pi r squared. So it's equal to pi times my r squared. And my r I'm going to use is this more accurate one. So pi times 3.023943 squared. You're using a calculator, so it doesn't make any, it any more complicated using ugly numbers. So don't be worrying about it. So pi times 3.023943. Three squared, and that works out to be twenty-eight point seven two seven. And and then if we work that out, that works out to be. Sorry, it goes on, but we'll just say that's going to be twenty-eight point seven three, and that's going to be centimeter squared. And I've gone to two decimal places, so. Important we question this really talk this really what this is is degrees of accuracy. So we haven't lost any accuracy uh, in the question because to find our radius we use the more detailed version of the diameter, and to find the area we use the more detailed version of the the radius as well.